G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today in the workshop we have a Volkswagen Amarok 2013 model with a two litre engine in it. During a service the other day, I noticed a couple of fault codes come up. One was indicating a glow plug issue, so let's check it out. Now last week when the customer bought their vehicle in, I hooked up the scan tool and it came up with these three codes. Over here we have a P161B glow plug for cylinder number two. Uh, the second one there is a P261A coolant pump, EGR coolant pump, secondary auxiliary pump that is. And then the third one over here is a P1601 relay for supply voltage, uh, which is the J317 uh, relay there. All of those codes haven't come back, but one clearly has come back. So let's have a look at the scan tool now and see which fault code is still current. And as you can see, our um, glow plug one has come up, glow plug for cylinder number two. So that's definitely a uh, confirmed one. It says up here it's confirmed, so we'll look at that. What do we do next? Well, we can have a look at freeze frame data, see if it's there. Yes, it is, and it gives us absolutely no information whatsoever. Well, thank you very much. So these are the glow plugs on our engine. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And as you can see, the cables or the wires are quite thick. They do pull a lot of current. This blue one over here, blue-black or black-blue, is number two. That's the one that we'll be looking at. Look, I'm not going to bother checking grounds and powers and all that sort of stuff because the others are working. It's just an individual glow plug that is playing up. Now here is our number two glow plug, that little bloke just there. Look, they go down a fair way. They've got a long connector that goes down there, so you've got to be careful about not breaking that connector. Um, but also, it's a little bit difficult to get to the glow plug. So we'll just remove it with a long pair of pliery looking things and carefully remove them if I can get around the camera. So I want to get down a fair way on there and just gently lift it up. Might lever it a little bit. There we go, it just popped off nicely. Put that to one side. And as you can see, there's a fair old length attached to it. I'm uh, not sure how I'm going to get that out to uh, access the glow plug, or just perhaps push it to one side. I might pop these other fellas off, uh, just so I can get the whole loom up a little bit further. That might make it easier on me, I think. I'd like to check the other glow plugs anyway, just to confirm that they are okay. I've suggested to the customer that if we're going to do one, we do a whole set. So I've managed to get all four up. That'll give me clearance to uh, these glow plug connectors. Give me a little bit of space to pull them out so I can check my glow plugs individually. A lot of debris down in there. Might give a bit of compressed air. I can see some rat turds down there as well. Nice. So this guy does live out in a little farm property. So that might be interesting too. Uh, connector looks okay. So I'm just going to do a resistance check on the uh, glow plugs itself. So one of these can go onto uh, an earth of some description. And this fella here, I'm just going to put a little extension on it because I can't get down there at all. So let's have a look at uh, this number two glow plug, if I can get down far enough. And uh, just put it on that center terminal and see what it reads. Should read about maybe one ohm, something along those lines. Oh, pig of a thing. Okay, I'm now on the top. Oh, look at that, 201 ohms. That's not good. Hopefully you guys can see it there. 201 ohms is not good. Should be, like I said, about 1, 1 1.5 ohms. Let's try this first one. And that's more the reading we should be getting. About 0.5 in this case. Some of these later ones have very low resistance indeed. So yes, that second one is definitely for schnookered. My number three glow plug is 0.6 of an ohm. My cylinder number four glow plug is 0.6 of an ohm there, as you can see. So clearly number two is the faulty one. But like I said, they've all done the same amount of distance, same amount of time. So I'm gonna to suggest to the customer that they all get replaced. So the customer has opted to go ahead and replace all the glow plugs, all four of them. After all, they've all had a hard time for their entire life. All four of them have done the same distance. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of them. 
A week has passed since I did my diagnosis and the customer has brought their vehicle back to have those glow plugs replaced. I did blow out around there with compressed air once before. Just want to do it again because I'm just about to replace those glow plugs. I'm also going to chuck in just a little bit of freeze and release just to try and help her undo those glow plugs. I don't want them to break or to thread or anything like that. So today I'll be using some NGK glow plugs, not a sponsor of course, and the part number is uh, Y1002AS in case you're remotely interested, but that's the NGK glow plugs I'll be using. These are actually pretty easy to access. You just go straight down on top of them with a 10 mil socket. I'm using a 10 mil deep socket here. Cruise down in there, and hopefully if they're not too tight, they should just undo. That's my theory. Oh, mate, beautiful. Love the feeling of that. Let's try the second one. Oh, beautiful. Glow plugs can be a pain in the butt, or they can come off nicely. In this case, uh, don't have to put any tension on there whatsoever. Very nice indeed. Good, okay. You might need a magnet to get those out because they're in there so far. But that's not an issue. And by using a glow plug removing device, better known as a magnet, they should be able to be pulled out. That's my theory. Come on, fellas. <laughs> Make a liar of me, come on. Uh, it's obviously not steel, guys. That's my problemo. Anyway, have to get them out with a uh, pair of pointy nose pliers. Here we go, there's number one. Whoa, that's had some uh, bit of a hard life. I'll lay these out shortly so that you can have a look at them. I'll keep them in order, of course. Another thing that you can use to pull them out is just a bit of hose. Just goes over the top there and she gets pulled out. I can't get my pliers down in there because it's so deep. So this piece of hose should hopefully work. That's got it. There you go. Easy peasy, buckets of sneezy. Number two. There's our third. And our fourth. To install my new ones, I'm just gonna chuck on just a touch of anti-seize on the threads, just to make sure that uh, they go in okay and they don't seize, yeah. Okay, time to tighten them up. According to my auto data information, my specifications at 17 Newton meters. And that's 17 Newton meters right there. And we just put our little glow plug leads back into place. That's my theory. Then we'll uh, clear all the codes. Uh, there's probably some codes come on for all of them because I had the ignition on with the leads disconnected. So no doubt um, they'll all come up as a glow plug fault. But the important thing is that number two doesn't because it's a brand new one. Okay, one, two, three, four, all in place. Put my wiring connector or my clips back onto the rail that holds the wiring loom in place. All right, so there's our dreaded uh, fault code of the, uh, what is it, a P0672. Now let's get rid of that, erase that one. Okie dokie, and it should be gone. There it is. So we'll uh, take it for a road test, maybe reconnect our scan tool and do a full system search.
there you go, done. I think the other day the resistance on number two was 200 and something, but of course this is now colder than it was uh, after it's been pulled out of the engine. These are ice cold now, so the resistance has in fact dropped. But in comparison to the others, it's way too much. Let's try number three for instance as an example, and let's have a look and see what that fella is doing. Oops, come on. There we go. And there we're getting about 0 0.9, 0 0.8 of an ohm, which is uh, what it's meant to be. So number two definitely had it. What does a glow plug look like when it heats up? <laughs> Let's find out. So I'm going to be showing you number one here. And hopefully... <laughs> look at that. Woo! Warm! Okay, I won't do that too much. These are super heated. They have a lot of current pass through them and all of a sudden they drop off and cool down. All a glow plug is designed to do is heat up the air inside the cylinder on a diesel. It is not a spark plug, it's a glow plug. Simply used just to heat up the air. Used for emissions, uh, cold starting, that sort of stuff, but that is how it works. She just glows, gets nice and warm. Okay, enough messing around here. I've just come back from a road test. I've also done a full system scan. There are no fault codes. A fairly basic sort of maintenance item that we did today, glow plugs on that Amarok. I hope you got something from the video today, and if you did, guys, and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.